All right, pretty people. So today we're finally gonna make the video on my new gun safe that I've had for the past eight months. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. I was originally planning on making this video in multiple parts. I was gonna do like a delivery day type of video, then talk about what's inside and then do the review. I had a couple things come up, like in regards to um, the safe. I'm gonna just meld all the videos into one. So we're gonna cover what it was like to get the delivery. I'm gonna go over some flaws that I've noticed with it over the past few months and some things to look out for when you're gonna order a Liberty safe. And then also I wanted to talk about kind of what my eight month review is. And if anything has worn out or broken or any of those types of things. And then we're gonna go through this safe and I'm gonna show you exactly what's inside of it and how I have it all organized. I'll also include links in the description where you can pick up the safe as well as all the organizers that I have in the safe. Just follow the first link in the description. Um, that'll take you to a separate page where all the products are listed for their links because we're not really supposed to put it on YouTube anymore. But without further ado, let's just get into it. guys so everyone just left um, the installers just left and I'm getting ready and I'm starting to get this all organized right here but I kind of ran into a problem you see it comes with this jewelry box and the jewelry box unfortunately kind of fell apart um, basically these screws they stripped out of the particle board right here I'm gonna have to drill some new holes probably, but I'm hoping that I can keep this flush at the same time. Otherwise, I'm probably either A, I'm gonna have to contact Liberty to send me a new board, or B, I'm gonna have to get some wood filler to fill all this in and, you know, fix it myself. Something that I just kind of noticed right here is if you look down into the hole, you can see it looks like there's like these plastic pieces that, you know, kind of hold that screw into place. But apparently they didn't do a good job, did they? Looks like these were attempted to be screwed twice. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but that's definitely a bummer. Funny story, it's been eight months since I actually received this safe. I was originally going to do a review of this a lot sooner, but I kind of had some quality control issues and I really wanted to see, you know, how this safe was gonna hold up um, over time, you know, and just make sure that things are gonna hold up. And I do have a few gripes about this. We are gonna go through it. I'll show you what's in there and stuff, just like I promised, but I wanted to show you how I got it set up. And then we're gonna talk about some things you need to look out for if you're gonna buy a Liberty safe. So first off, this is the Liberty Lincoln 50. So it's approximately six feet tall, 42 inches wide and 32 inches deep. You can see the depth of it, a couple gun bags on the top. And that is it. It is just sitting in here. Um, and I like it because I can access it. I like the color. This is the marble gray. So when you go to order this, you get a couple of options, I believe. I believe you can choose whether or not you want a digital um, lock or if you want like a standard lock, but you can opt for either lock that you want. I went with the digital one. It is EMP proof. So that's kind of cool. There is a battery backup in here. But the thing I like about this safe more than my other safe, if you guys haven't seen my other safe video, I will throw a link in the description so you can watch it after this video. And I think both safes kind of have pros and cons over the other one, which you know we can talk about here in a minute. But down here, 
is where it plugs into the wall. So you always have power going to this and it doesn't use the batteries until it needs to. So if we lock it, locks just like so. Um, this one does have the black nickel chrome finish to it and I like it. And I've been using this every single day over the past eight months. And I was worried that some of this might wear off. I've seen that on some watches before where the black nickel starts to rub off, but this one hasn't. Once it's put the code in, you can unturn it, you can open it up. And then the cool thing is, is all the lighting is already integrated into it. So over here on the right, we got an LED strip that goes all the way down. We also have one on the left side that goes all the way down, same as that side. For the lights, that is all the lights there are. I do kind of wish there was some lights kind of up in the top, but unfortunately there's not. I think you can call them and order more lights. So that's a good thing. Now, earlier I was showing you this jewelry box thing here. Kind of goes under here. I don't have any jewelry really in it. I got a couple of watches. I got some pocket knives and flashlights in there. And that's kind of what I use that for. How did I fix this? So cool thing is Liberty actually includes a couple of extra shelving units. So I just took out one of the shelving units that I wasn't using and I just re-drilled the holes and it's been holding up ever since. So before we go into what all's in here and how I have it organized, I kind of wanted to talk about some flaws with this safe. And, you know, just kind of heads up guys, Liberty did send this to me to do the video. Like I didn't buy this, but my philosophy on this channel has always been, I don't really care if I paid for it or if I didn't pay for it. I want to do the best job I can do on telling you what it's like to actually own a product. So issue number one was this jewelry box stripping out. That was a uh, kind of like, eh, okay. Another issue I'm noticing, let me see if I can get a good angle on it, is this top shelf right here. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this camera perfectly level. And the way I know it's level is I have a level on my camera. So this top shelf is bowed downward and it's been bowed downward since I got it. It's funny because down in here where Liberty attempted to brace it. And I'm just gonna be really honest. Um, not Don't mean any disrespect to Liberty, but that's a half-assed job of trying to brace a board. Um, they just braced it with more particle board. <laughs> I don't mean any disrespect, but that's just the truth of the matter. Right now I have my drone in my drone case. I also have this dehumidifier rod, which I don't really need because I live in Arizona, so it doesn't get humid out here. Um, got some camera lenses right here. Got some ear pro, a couple mags, and I got a couple lowers and some paperwork here that's important. That's all I have on this top shelf, and it's still bowed. I haven't changed it up. I haven't added weight to it over, over time. So it seems like the drawer issue, as well as this bowing issue, could totally be solved if they just used real wood instead of particle board. So I would suggest even plywood because you're not gonna get this weird bowing effect. You're not gonna get screws stripping out. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I try to review this as if I did spend my own money on this. And be really honest, I'd be pretty pissed off if I spent four grand on this and then I, the particle board was starting to fall apart. Now, don't get me wrong, Liberty has an amazing warranty on these. They actually have a lifetime transferable warranty. So if you bought this used off of someone, that warranty will still transfer to you. And if I wanted a new top board, I totally understand that I can just contact them and get another board. That's not the issue. The issue is I don't think you should have to, if that makes sense. So issue number one, particle board. Issue number two that I've started noticing over time is the liner inside. So inside it's got this beautiful velour liner and I've noticed some things that are a little strange about this velour liner. If you notice on this wall here, this liner is looks like it's glued down with some kind of spray adhesive. On top of your shelves, it's stuck to it with spray adhesive, stuck to it spray adhesive everywhere in here, except for two places right here. Look at this. You can kind of see it moving. This one's not that bad. Where it gets bad is up there. So you see a wrinkle on the left and a wrinkle on the right, but it's even worse up here. This is falling off. It's kind of like cars from the 80s and the 90s where the headliners start falling. That's exactly what's happening here. And it's been like that since the day I received it. So all of these flaws that you're seeing right here have been here since day one. I just wanted to see if they were gonna get worse. So again, I can 100% call Liberty and get it fixed. And I think that I might. Another kind of problem slash issue that I'm seeing is this guy. 
So if we look at this like stitching right here, tell me what you notice when you look from right to left. Yeah, it's not very straight, is it? It just kind of goes down and then here it kind of goes up, then it kind of comes down, then it kind of comes up. It's so, and then even right here, you can see some exposed uh, particle board and it looks like all they did was, so if you look inside, they just stapled it, I think, in the middle. So I could probably fold that up, put a staple right there, but that's not the point. I'm kind of just wanting to show you what it's like when you get it. So essentially there's three cons, uh, one being the particle board, uh, two being the velour liner. I don't think they used any adhesive on it up here or over here. And then three, three being the edge banding along the particle board. So. That kind of sucks. Let's go through the gun safe and I'll show you what all I have in here and you know, kind of how I have it organized. One thing to keep in mind guys. So for those of you who have been following the channel from I would say 2017 on, uh, you'll notice that this isn't all my gun. So for those who are new to this channel, we used to do tons of polymer 80 builds and stuff on this channel. And then when YouTube changed the rules, we had to take those videos down. So I'm sure a lot of you new guys have not seen those videos. I still use my old safe, which is the snap safe. And I still love that safe. It's actually in my closet over there. And that's the one thing I like about it is it comes apart, you can put it in closets. So I have a ton of half guns in that other safe. Lots of lowers, lots of uppers that just don't have internal parts. And then I also use it for ammo storage. But right here on this top shelf, I have my handguns. So we got Glock 19, Glock 19, Nomad Defense Glock 19, Polymer 80, Glock 34, Glock 34, Glock 19, Polymer 80, Polymer 80. We then have the FN 509 Tactical, FN 509, and my CZ P01, which I strangely never shoot. I thought I was gonna shoot it a lot more. Um, moving up here, 1911, 45 ACP. We got the 2011 that we built with eBay parts right here, chambered in nine millimeter. We got the Rock Island Armory, a uh, nine millimeter, which I still need to do a review on. There's actually a couple guns you're gonna see in here that I haven't reviewed yet. Um, down here, we got a few more handguns. So we got the Smith & Wesson R8 that we did a video on. Don't shoot that one very much either. Strangely, we got the HK VP9. We got this new 80% uh, Glock 19 frame that I'm waiting to do a video on. Reason I haven't done the videos is because of summertime and with the virus and everything, you know, it's just been kind of a pain to go to the indoor range, so I'm waiting. Uh, this is actually my very first Glock 19, uh, not the slide, but the frame. Then we have my Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS, and then we have one that was in my recent EDC update video, the Glock 19X, so that's pretty cool. Under here, I got other guns. We got a couple of Glock 26s. We got my Glock 43. We got my MMP shield. We got the Glock 20 and 10 millimeter. And then we got my Ruger uh, Mark IV 22. That's handguns. That's not all the handguns. One of the coolest parts about this safe is this door pocket right here. It is included with the safe. Up here, we got a few other guns. We got my MMP 2.0. We have the Salient Arms MMP. We got the MMP 2.0 Compact, CZ P10C, uh, P07. We got Glock 19, Glock 19, Glock 17. And then we have the, uh, what are these? These are the Fax and Firearms Glocks. This one is, one of them's the Hellfire. I think this one's the Hellfire. And then this one's called the Patriot. I've made a video on that in the past. Then I have some uh, magazines right here in these little slots going across and going down. And then I just have miscellaneous paperwork and stuff in here. Now this pocket here and that pocket here, um, you'll notice they're called cool pockets. And what they are is they're even more fireproof than the safe. But I like to try to put all kinds of documents in those, at least everything that'll fit. That way, if there is a fire, uh, you know, everything will be all right. Um, down here, there is a light sensor. This, this sensor senses light, so when you open it up, the lights come on. And then if it doesn't sense any light for a while, the lights will shut off. So that's the handguns and the door pocket. And now let's get to the uh, rifles. So for my rifles, we got the Aero Precision 308 that we built a few years ago. We got the Fax and Firearms Carbon Fiber AR-15. We got my 300 Blackout build. Then I have a standard, like, M16 style AR-15. We got my Remington 870 Tactical. We got the custom like Ruger style 22 long rifle. 
Then I have my Palmetto State AK. Then we have the very first AR-15 I ever built, which is a you know multitude of different parts. Then over here, we have the AR pistols. This is one right here that I haven't tested yet. This is the AKV from Palmetto State Armory. Essentially, it's a nine millimeter AK, and it also has last round bolt hold open, which is cool. This one here was an AR pistol that I built from Legion Precision. We called it the panty dropper build, what have you. I'm gonna take these out so we can work our way back. Okay, so then here we have the CMMG, whoa. When you start moving stuff, stuff falls. This is the CMMG Banshee 57 Upper that I have on a, on a different lower. This one is the CMMG Banshee chambered in nine millimeter. Oh, I'm glad I took the safe apart. I didn't realize everything fell. That one is a nine millimeter Ingstat Arms AR pistol. And then this one here is the bufferless AR pistol that we built from the Brownells BRN 180S Upper. Love that gun to death. I actually have a couple of videos on it. And then this one is called the Palmetto State Armory KS-47. So this is an AR-15 that shoots 7.62, and it also accepts AK magazines. Made a video on that. It's a pretty awesome little gun. Then that one is the very first uh, Palmetto State Armory AR pistol that I built. Love it to death. Shoots amazingly well. And then this is the Alkiel Defense ZK-22 Bullpup that we built. Love that gun. It's a fun little gun to shoot. One thing that I'm probably gonna invest in very shortly is some rods, especially for the AR pistols and stuff because they just kind of flop around, but the rods that will actually hold them straight up vertically. And I'll probably get some for the rifles here as well. Essentially what they'll do is they, they'll attach up here above it and then they come straight down. You don't gotta worry about your, your rifles and everything floating around. All right, cool, I wanted to interrupt there. That's what the safe looks like, but I wanted to go over a couple of other things about this safe that you should know. I wanted to go over the lead time and the delivery. So number one, I believe this safe took about five months to arrive. I believe I ordered it in July of 2019 and I got it in early December of 2019. It was supposed to have been three months, but it turned, to, turned out to be five. Secondly, the people that deliver it. What, what will happen is they will ship your safe to a, hopefully a local dealer. Somebody is going to be semi-local and they're going to call you and schedule a delivery. Now the delivery guys were really awesome. They call it their white glove delivery service. I don't know what that really means. I didn't see any white gloves, the guy, but that's beside the point. But the guys came, uh, they called me beforehand and you saw the footage. They were out front, you know, they were just unloading it and bringing it inside. And they had this really cool dolly um, that was motorized to lift it up and move it around. It only took two guys to move this 1150 pound safe, which is not too bad. Delivery, I do believe, is included in the price. If I'm wrong about that, um, someone correct me down below. Delivery is included in the price unless you take it up a flight of stairs. In that case, I believe it's an extra 150 or $200. And I, I don't blame them. I've carried heavy things upstairs before, so totally understand. But the guys were awesome. Like if I wanted this anchored into the floor, they were more than willing to drill into the floor and bolt it down. So whenever we move, um, we're gonna buy a house soon, I'm hoping. And so whenever we move into that location, I'm gonna call Liberty and they they will do it. I think for two or three, I think it's like 250-ish dollars. They will move it to the new location, put it wherever you want it. Of course, at that house, I'll have them drill into the concrete and anchor it down. Now, the other cool thing about the, the guys that delivered it is before they leave, they make sure you know everything about this safe. They show you how to set your code. They show you what to do in case you forget your code, how to reset the code. And then they give you all your paperwork and the warranty information. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a lifetime warranty and it is transferable. So if you bought it used, that applies to you. Or if you sell it, the new owner will get the warranty, which I think is actually kind of cool. Now, earlier when I was talking about the cons, one of the reasons I kind of made a big deal about those cons is because of the price of the safe and because of the reviews I've seen, you know, kind of glorifying the safe and the brand. The reason I kind of made those cons, you know, kind of really wanted to iterate them was because the safe cost $4,000. Different colors cost different prices. So if you go to their website and you're selecting a color and an interior color, there's different sheens that you can get on the colors. There's satin, there's gloss, all that stuff. The price will vary. I believe the most expensive one is 4,200. I think you can get them as low as 38 or 3,900. I'm not 100% sure. It just depends on, you know, do you get a mechanical lock or do you get an electric lock or do you get the black nickel or do you get the standard chrome all kinds of crazy stuff aside from those three cons that i mentioned it's held up phenomenally well like i mentioned earlier the board was bent 
it was bent when it got here. The velour wasn't stuck to the top or the side when it arrived. And none of it has gotten worse over the past eight months. And I've used this safe every single day, going in and out of it, taking guns out, making videos, going to the range. It gets a lot of use. It gets opened and closed over and over and over and over again. So despite those cons, this thing has a ton of pros. You know, it's got a 90 minute fire rating at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really good. It's just the same as my uh, snap safe, I believe. You know, the front panel on the front door of the safe is one inch thick, but the total thickness of the door is four and a half inches. The ceiling is four inches. The walls of the safe are three inches thick. And then the lock bars that line the entire top, side and bottom of the door, those are four inches in diameter. And those things are awesome. So essentially what would happen is, although there's no external hinges on this safe, if someone was able to do something to this safe, they're not gonna get that door off. I mean, even demolition ranch has shot this thing with a cannon and they're still hard to get into. It's a really difficult safe to get into. Not that it's impenetrable because every safe can be broken into. I always see comments where people are saying, oh, I could break into that. Well, the main purpose of me getting a safe is to prevent against fires and, you know, family members or guests getting into my stuff. You know, if a thief wants it bad enough and they know what you have, they're going to figure out when you're not home and they're going to figure out when you're not home for a long period of time and they're going to take it. That's just all there is to it. That's why you buy insurance on things. The number one enemy against any thief is time and sound. And what I mean by that is you got to bring special tools to break into these things, especially if you're going to cut into it. And those tools are going to make a lot of noise where neighbors are going to hear it if you have neighbors. And then also it's going to take a lot of time. Now, one question I like to answer in every single video that I do, like I mentioned earlier, I like to review the safe as if I spent the money. And the way I do that is I put myself in the shoes of, okay, I just wrote a check for $4,000 and now I received the safe. How do I feel about it? And like I mentioned earlier, I'd be pretty upset if I would have received the safe with the flaws that it has. If I would have ordered the safe and paid for it, I would have called Liberty up immediately and had those issues rectified. Like I said, the only reason I didn't, I wanted to see if the flaws were gonna get worse and they didn't. So now that we've got the video done, I'm gonna call Liberty and I'm gonna get those issues rectified and I will make an update video in the future on that. So knowing what I know now, would I spend my own money on this safe? And the answer is yes. The main reason I say that, you'd be hard pressed to find a safe that has all the features that this safe has, that has the same fire rating, that has the same uh, EMP level of protection for the same price. Most of the safes that I've looked at that are competitors are a little bit higher priced. There are some that are lower priced, but then their fire ratings aren't the same, or they don't have the EMP protection, or they don't have the lock bars that go around the entire perimeter of the door. So there's little things like that you kind of have to look for. So I think best bang for the buck, I do think that this is pretty good, but then again, maybe my opinion is biased, but I'm really trying not to be biased at all. The only thing that I really think Liberty needs to implement into their manufacturing is stop using particle board. Even if it didn't come bowed you know, from the factory, even if that jewelry box didn't strip out, particle board doesn't last a long time. And you know, with a safe that you're buying, especially of this magnitude, you're buying it to last you the lifetime of your family. If not lo longer, you pass it down to your children. And I think that that should be represented in the quality of materials that are used on the interiors. I think they either need to level up and use some hard maple or even just plywood. And I think that they should do that without increasing the price of the safe. I don't know what their financials look like. I don't know what their manufacturing costs are because they are made in the United States. But I think if that's possible, I think it would just take their quality level way higher for not a whole lot of extra cost, but that's just my opinion. Otherwise, I love it. If there's anything I didn't cover in today's video, let me know down in the comments section. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.